Today we're going to look at Chapter 8.2, Perimeters of Composite Figures. So uh, you've already uh, learned about uh, two-thirds of this already. Uh, the perimeter of uh, most of the two-dimensional polygon shapes, you know, like squares, rectangles, triangles, parallelograms, shapes like that, you've already learned how to do that. You know that all you have to do is just add up the size and you find the perimeter. Uh, the last lesson we did was uh, how to find the circumference. And as you learn there, the circumference is basically the perimeter of a circle, the distance around a circle. So we're going to add one more new, one more wrinkle to uh, this, and uh, uh, we're going to learn how to combine everything together. And that's all we have to really do for the perimeter of composite figures. Now, what is a composite figure? Well, a composite figure is made up of triangles, squares, rectangles, semicircles, and other two-dimensional figures. Here are some examples. Uh, we have a square with a triangle. Uh, which actually creates to make a trapezoid, and then we have a, uh, um, a rectangle and a semicircle. And when we're looking at the perimeter, we're looking at the distance around on the outside. So we have the distance here, down, and around. So that green part is the perimeter. Or over here, the red part we're putting here, oops, the red part we're putting here is the perimeter of the uh, uh, rectangle and semicircle. So that's what we're going to look at is how to find that perimeter. So let's take a peek over here. Uh, this is where we're going to kind of run into the third uh, uh, wrinkle in how to find the perimeter of these composite shapes. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at um, our straight edges. You know, if we look over at the parts I'm making red here. I'm going to uh, highlight all of our very easy to use straight edges. And I can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six units. I have one, two, two units. I have one, two, three, four units. I have one, two, three, four, five, six units over here. And then two over here. So I have um, two plus 6, plus 4, plus 6, plus 2. And if I add all of those units up, I end up getting 20. Now I also have this diagonal that goes across here, and I have this diagonal that goes across here. And you'll notice that I have a square. So I have the blue square here. My diagonal cuts it right in half. Now, when using the Pythagorean Theorem, which is an eighth grade concept, which we may get into later on this uh, year, we'll learn that if the sides of said square is one unit, uh, then the diagonal going through it is approximately 1.5. And that's what we're going to use here. So we're going to look at how many diagonals we have. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have 4, 4. So I have a total of 8. I'm going to multiply that by 1.5. Okay. Um, and again, that 1.5 is telling you that is approximately the length of that diagonal. So when I do 8 by 1.5, I get 12. Then all I have to do is add 20 plus 12, giving me about 32 units. So I want you to go ahead and try, you'll see that right here. I want you to uh, try the next two problems and see how you do with it. And we'll check in with you in just a moment. Okay, let's take a look at number one to begin with. So for number one, I'm going to highlight our straight non-diagonal edges first. I have this one and this one. That's it. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Should have seven on the other side. Let's make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven across here. So I have seven plus seven is fourteen. And then, 
I'm going to go ahead and look at my diagonals. So I have this one, this one, this one, and this one. So I have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So 3 times 4 is 12, so I have 12 times that 1.5, which gets me um, approximately 18. So I'm going to do 14 plus 18, and that gets me about 32 units. I'm hoping that you are able to come up with something very similar to that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other example here. I'm going to highlight again the straight edges that are non-diagonals. So I have one here, one here, I have one here, and one over here. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have one, two, three. So I'm going to do three plus five plus eight plus ten, giving me twenty-six. And then I have my one diagonal going across here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, and five times. The 1.5 gets me about 7.5. So 26 plus 7.5, and that is about 33.5 units. Oops. All right. Hopefully, uh, you were able to come up with the same. Uh, uh, perimeter for that shape as well. We're going to move on to our next uh, uh, two examples. You're doing great. Uh, for this example, you can see we have a triangle and a semicircle that have formed together. So again, we're only looking at the, uh, the outside edges. So we have an edge right here and an edge right here for the triangle. So we have 8 plus 6, giving me 14. Then I have the semicircle goes around here, right? And uh, if they, uh, to find the perimeter of a, semi, of a circle, that's the circumference. Uh, I'm going to try to find the perimeter of a half a circle. I'm going to do half the circumference. I'm given uh, the diameter. So I'm going to use C is equal to pi times the diameter. But since I only need half, I'm going to multiply by uh, one half. Or if you want to use 0 0.5, uh, they use a slightly different uh, formula. I like mine better, but uh, you can use either or, whatever makes more sense to you. I'm going to plug in my information. So for the circumference, I have, we'll use approximately 3.14 times the diameter is 10 times 1 half, or 0 0.5. Uh, when I multiply that out, I get the circumference is approximately 15.7. Again, feel free to use your calculator. And so I'm going to take my 14 uh, and add it to my 15.7. I'm going to get about 29.7 feet. So that's how I find the, uh, the perimeter of that shape that's part triangle, part semicircle. All right. Now, another example I have here is the track. Now, I want us to look at what information is given to us. Uh, it says uh, the running track is made up of a rectangle and two semicircles. Find the perimeter. Um, and so we're looking, do we want the inside or the outside perimeter? Based on the information that's given to us, we can find the perimeter of the inside track. So we're looking at, we're going to look at the track that goes from here to here and going down from here to here, and here to here, and then around here to here. And so I know, because it tells me, that 
the distance of the straightaway is 100 meters, and this distance as well is 100. So I can do 100 plus 100 is 200. Now, with the semicircles, uh, if I have two semicircles, that means I have one circle. So I can do circumference is equal to pi, and I'm given 32 as a radius, so I'm going to do pi 2r. So if I do pi 2r, I'm going to have uh, approximately 3.14 times 2 times 32, and my circumference is approximately uh, 29 or 20.96. I'm sorry, 200.96. So I can take my 200 plus my uh, 200.96, and I'm going to get uh, about. Uh, 400.96 meters and so uh, the perimeter is about 496 10 or 9600 uh, perimeter or meters okay and so I'm going to go ahead and have you guys try number one, uh, three and number four and we'll check back in with you in just a moment see how you did All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number three first. Uh, so we again have a uh, triangle with a semicircle, just like our example. And so we can add 24 plus 10 to get 34. That's for the straight edges here. And then we're going to look at the semicircle from here to here. And so, since it's a semicircle, we're going to do circumference is approximately uh, pi. Well, I guess it's not approximately. In this case, it's the circumference is pi times diameter times one half. Now, it becomes approximately because we're going to go ahead and use 3.14 times the diameter, which is 26 times one-half, or 0 0.5, and so the circumference is approximately uh, 40.82. We're going to go ahead and add the 34, and we get about uh, 74.82 centimeters. So hopefully that is the answer you came up with for the perimeter of this shape. Uh, let's go ahead and look at uh, our shape uh, to the right. It says this figure is made up of a square and two semicircles. Notice it says a square. Very important we notice it's a square. Uh, so if we know that it is a square, then we know that if it is 8 meters here, we know it's 8 meters here. We also know that it is 8 meters here, which would be our diameter. So our, our diameter is 8 meters. And then we have our two semicircles. So I'm going to begin with uh, my 8 plus 8, giving me 16. And then with my semicircles, I'm going to have uh, two of them, meaning I have an entire circle. So I'm going to do uh, circumference is equal to pi times diameter. Then I plug in my information, so I have C is approximately 3.14 times 8, which we decided is the uh, diameter of the circle. And so my circumference is about 25.12. I'm going to add that to my 16, which we found earlier, 
and I find out this is about 41.12, it's a really terrible decimal, sorry, 41.12 meters. And that is all we have. We're done. Uh, hopefully this made some sense to you, and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Today is a day that is filled with surprises.